Welcome to the Darren Burke Show, episode 13, lucky number 13. It's probably going to be the last episode in Ireland, <clears throat> I think. I have a few days left, but um, I think this might be the last one because I have a lot of things to do over the next uh, little bit before moving back to Canada on Monday. Uh, today is the, the 8th of November, moving back to Canada on the 14th, and... Uh, yeah, job sorted, back into the house where the dungeon is, and um, a few gigs sorted as well, so yeah, looking forward to it, it's been fucking, um, I missed the last two weeks of the podcast, I, I wanted to be really consistent the whole time, but um, I had the wedding, I was best man for the wedding, um, so I had a good, I had a good excuse, I think. I, I had the best man speech for the wedding. It was uh, I was I was pretty nervous about it because it was it's a different it's a different type of thing than comedy. I know if you're a comedian, a speech should be easy, and it actually was eventually. But thinking about it, I was thinking, oh, it's not the same. I can't. Um, usually, when I go on stage, I don't give a shit if anyone laughs or not, which actually in turn makes them laugh more. But. Uh, for a wedding, obviously, you want you want everyone to be relatively happy with your speech. So, which so they were, but uh, I was uh, under pressure there for a bit. But uh, yeah, I drank uh, drank way too much then for a few days. I had a great time, Bob and Gobby. Uh, nice old send off. I've um, yeah, I feel like I've kind of gotten what I needed out of my trip home. I've. Uh, Anyone that's been watching this is probably just watching my mental state go up and down as as uh, as the podcasts go on. But uh, now I'm feeling really good about getting back to Canada now, getting back, um, getting back, making some money and back fucking uh, back doing comedy every night. So over here, there was um, there was a place that I was doing comedy that I've done it. I did it five or six times in a place called Katie Daly's. A guy called John Mulligan was running it, and um, without that, I would have been lost. Uh, so th that was only on like once every couple of weeks. Um, but it was perfect. It was just just unreal um, to to get on stage because I was I had, had, didn't really have a time limit there, so I would be able to get twenty twenty five minutes every couple of weeks. So that um, that has kept me ticking over well. But I'm I'm. Looking forward to getting back now and jumping on stage most nights, any night that I'm off anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, four months in Ireland will will do you good on the west coast of Clare. The sea air, the fucking, the drinking, the people, the crack. It's been, um, it's been deadly. It's going to be strange now going back over to, to Toronto, over to the snow, but... Uh, but delighted that I I did this little trip there. It's uh, it's been it's been great, and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm going back with a good a good mindset. I remember the, like at the start, we I came back and I was kind of every now and again would have arguments with my mother. And as I was home, I was reading Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth, and I'd read a few pages a day. And as I was going halfway through the book, it was like I had the arguments ever hardly ever get anywhere. And then three quarters way through, it's like the arguments barely happen anymore. And then uh, you get to the end of the book and uh, it's like, oh, yeah, you just never argue with anybody at all. Obviously, that will probably wear off. But uh, that's a serious book. If anybody hasn't, I'll throw it up there. Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth. It's um, if you want to get your head right, you want to get your head straight and think about things that really matter and all that. And yeah, Eckhart Tolle, the main man. So he's sending me back to Canada with uh, a full load, ready to fucking, ready to fucking blow up. Um, fucking, what was I even gonna talk? I like I've to, all my all my suitcases are all here. Everything's all packed up. I've just um, I haven't really been writing the last the last little bit, so I, d I don't I didn't really have a plan for this podcast at all. I just said I needed to get on stage before, or get on, on camera before going back because um, yeah, when I get back, then I'll have more excuses not to get on camera again. And uh, that uh, it's just 
I, I need to get back and back being consistent. All my bags are full, packed, heading back over. I got, um, I got my, uh, yeah, I'll be sleeping in the dungeon. So if we're doing shows, we'll be doing shows in my bedroom. Um, so, uh, yeah, one of the things, uh, I, that happened when I got home that I realized I fucking, uh, I like smoking cigarettes. It's bad. I need to get back over to Canada and quit again, but, uh, everyone in the house smokes, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty difficult as well. But it's just, I, I went, I went all my life without, without smoking. Because uh, my father told me if I smoked, I wouldn't be able to play for Newcastle or play for Manchester United. And uh, but he could have also told me that. But obviously, you can't play for Manchester United if you're shit either. So I could have smoked the whole time. So I didn't smoke until I went over to Guatemala, and because uh, they were like three euros a pack, I said I'd try them out. Other people were smoking, so I said I'd try them. Uh, well, I had I had tried a few in Toronto before that, but I I said that was the first time I bought a pack, and uh, it's just lovely to sit there and just smoke away while you're writing, um, in front of a fucking lake or something. It's just so calming, and uh, see, I never tried this till I was thirty. I just thought like, oh, it's so, fags, such a waste of time, such a fucking stupid thing to do. Uh, Fifteen quid a pack, it's don't even smell nice. It must not even be nice to do. It's just what you're just addicted to nothing. And then you, you smoke one and you're like, all oh, right, it actually, it actually is nice. People all, people say that they're not nice. Like they, people that do smoke, they're like, oh, I hate the things. I hate them. But you're just lying to kind of appease the people that don't smoke. They're, it's not, you, you don't hate it. You obviously enjoy it some bit um, because they're enjoyable. I Like I'd be thinking, um, I come inside the cinema now and I'm just thinking like, fuck, I'd love to be smoking a fag here. Like, or even when I'm swimming, I'm, I'd be swimming through the water and think like this would be made better with a fag because it would like, it's just, it's just nice. Especially as a comedian, I fucking, I could uh, standing, just standing still staring off into the distance with a cigarette. You just, you have amnesty. Like if you stand out on the street, staring off into the distance as a regular person, like you'd be picked up. You'll be picked up by the police, like they are. People will fucking people will ring the guards, like they be like, "There's so, there's some something suspicious going on down here." But then you just take his smoke. It's like ah, he's having a fag. Fuck it. Ah, happy days. Leave him off. <clears throat> ah, it's the great things. Great things. I I don't like. I get a you get a kind of a cough with it. They do kind of smell after. Like um, it's not great. It's it, waste of money obviously they they kill you i suppose and the little warnings on the pack isn't ideal like looking at that be like fucking people with throat cancer and all that so like you you probably shouldn't smoke you should you like you shouldn't it's correct to say that you shouldn't smoke but people are saying it's not enjoyable to smoke that that's that's incorrect so um yeah but that's uh since coming back that's uh i fucking every now and again, because I, I, I haven't smoked weed since moving back. I smoked weed a good bit in Canada, so I haven't I haven't smoked weed that at all. So still, like, just the act of smoking was kind of nice to do sometimes if I was not bored, but just, like, oh, yeah, one of the things I did was uh, that I wish I never found out was how unbelievable it is to have a fag on the golf course while you're following your ball. Bay it out a ball, hit off a, a nice drive, just light one for while you're strolling away to the to the ball it's fucking one of life's pleasures like it's i wish i never found out because it's fucking it's so fantastic like it's so great and uh yeah i just wanted to point out that smokers are liars if they're saying that they don't enjoy it and they don't know why they do it and oh i wish i could quit yeah you probably wish you could quit because it's going to kill you earlier and you're gonna you're gonna die and you're probably gonna get cancer but don't be saying you don't enjoy it because you definitely enjoy it fucking great i uh yeah when i was uh speaking of guatemala there when, when i was in guatemala i um 
I just I was with my friends the other day and I fucking I thought of this just uh mad enough really. I fucking I got to actually it wasn't Guatemala, it was Mexico. So after Guatemala I went back to Mexico before coming back to Ireland. And uh I I wanted to get some weed. So I rang up a fella or call call up a number. You get it on the internet, there's place in, in San Cristobal in Mexico. It's like really easy to get drugs. Uh, it's really easy probably everywhere, but um, there there's actually a shop that does deliveries and all. And uh, so I called him, it's like, uh, I need to get some weed. And uh, he said, how much do you want? Uh, I, an ounce is this and a half ounce is this. I was like, fucking hell, I don't need that much, but it was so cheap. It was like a half an ounce was... I don't, know, I don't even think it was 20 quid. Like it was, it was, yeah, nothing. I remember texting my friend Simon the price of it once I, once I got it. Uh, so it was like 15, 20 quid for a, a half ounce. And I was like, fuck it, sure, I, I'm, I'll be in a hostel. I can give it to other people or whatever. I can share it around. So I said, look, Gran, give me one of them. And uh, give me, uh, and then he said, I asked him if he had mushrooms and he didn't. Um, so he said, but he said he had acid and acid was like a five or a hit or something. So I said, right, throw me two tabs of acid. And <clears throat> so that night, cause I got there, I didn't know anyone there that night. There was friends of mine were coming a couple of days later or whatever. So that night I was just like, fuck it right off. I am, um, I'm going to get high. So got, got that anyway, uh, ate the tab of acid, um, and then smoked a few joints and I just stayed in watching watching movies that night. I think I watched like Alice in Wonderland. You know, I had done that before I and mean, it was absolutely unbelievable experience. But if you do something something high once and it's absolutely class, like it's never gonna be like that again. So you shouldn't really chase that exact thing. You should always do different things. But um but it wasn't a bad experience anyway. It just wasn't what I remembered from the first time I did it when it blow, blew my mind. Um, anyway, that that was fine that night. And then over over the next uh, over the next few weeks, <clears throat> over the next few days, I suppose I, I think I was in San Cristobal for like a week or a little bit more. Over the next few days I smoked a little bit but it, like a half ounce is a shitload like it's a shitload of weed it's a big fucking bag like um and uh so smoked just a small bit over the next couple of days while I was like sitting in coffee shops writing and that I didn't I I was I, at the end of my trip I just wanted to do a bit more writing before heading back to Toronto and uh but I wasn't really sure what I was what I was doing and uh the one of the <clears throat> a couple of days later, I ended up chatting to somebody back in Toronto. They said I could have a job straight away, so I said, "Fuck it, I better. I'm going to fly back." So I booked a flight to fly back in like two two days time or whatever. I realized oh, I have all this weed, so I need to give this away. So I went. I had a friend that I had met in Guatemala. She was coming down to meet in San Cristobal. So she had arrived on. So then I said, right, we'll I'll meet you for a drink tonight. I actually have, uh, I have a lot of weed for you. I can just, I can just give it to you cause I'm flying on the plane, uh, tomorrow. And, uh, she, uh, she was like, oh, fucking perfect. So I went, met for a few drinks, handed over her the weed, but I kept a little bit for myself then, uh, just a tiny bit for the rest of the, for that night. And, uh, gave her the, big bag like so went off and he was heading home after the bar and uh i decided i was so careful for the whole time i was really careful and paranoid because you know like mexican police you don't want to get caught with drugs like because they no, they won't put, bring you to jail like they but they will uh bribe you or they will ask for a bribe i was really careful all this time this was my last night in san cristobal I don't know how, why it was so stupid, but I just, I went to the fucking, the window of uh, just a house, like, and I was, I was rolling a joint and, uh, up behind me, I heard a fucking motorbike stop. I wasn't even looking up. I wasn't even checking, like, so stupid. And a uh, motorbike pulled up behind me. Um, cop fucked. So I was like, 
but I was rolling it, but I definitely was, I was putting in tobacco, like I was putting the tobacco into it. So then he was like, oh, but I could speak Spanish. So I was speaking Spanish back to him. Like, so that, I think that's what kind of saved me. But uh, I was just saying, oh, cigarro, uh, just, just rolling a cigarette, just a cigarette. And he was like, uh, oh, it's all a cigar. And then he was like picking out the bits out of the joint. And it was the tobacco. It was only a bit of weed sprinkled through. So he was smelling it, but he was skeptical. And he was like looking at the little pieces <clears throat> and he wasn't sure like, and then he checked my, checked my pockets, checked my wallet, everything. And then there was a, there was a cigarette box in my pocket. And then he opened that and I realized there was another fucking joint in the cigarette box that I had rolled already. I didn't even need to roll one because there was one rolled already for my walk home. But he looked at that, but obviously that looked the same as the other one. And then he pointed at that and he said, solo cigarro. I said, yes, yeah, see, si, solo cigarro, only a cigarette. And he pulled that out and then he smelled that. And I don't know what, like it did smell a bit like weed. Like, so he smelled that, I put it back in. Then he, he open, took my wallet out of my pocket. He took it. There was only 200 pesos in it, which is, is uh, fuck all anyway. And uh, he took them out. And, uh, then he put them back into the wallet. Uh, like he looked through the wallet, put them back in. I guess the, the fact that there was no bag of weed, he was like, well, where's he rolling this from? So he put it back in, put it back in my pocket. And, uh, he was like, okay, when it's not just, and I was like, fucking thank God. But like under the, the joint in the cigarette box, the bag of weed was down at the bottom of that cigarette box. So yeah. And he went into the box and everything. He just, he didn't see it because he just got caught at the top. So extremely fucking lucky. And, uh, the fact that I had, um, I had just given a big bag of weed, to to my friend down in the pub as well. So if I would have had that on me, I was bollocks. I definitely, I could have spent a night in a jail or I would have probably had to give him about 500 quid, like 500 euros, like not fucking pesos. Um, so I, all right, <clears throat> my computer crashed there. So I am not a hundred percent sure where it finished, but I think I was just telling you about, uh, I was very lucky, um, not to fucking get bribed. So I, I, the sound might sound different and everything. I'm using a different computer for the second half of this, but, um, whatever, I think it should be fine. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, annoying couple of minutes there that you didn't get to hear me fucking and blinding but uh here we are back so yeah um gave away that weed uh got cop of the cop got away with it so i had the cigarette box i had a little bit of weed in the cigarette box um left or whatever so i, I smoked one of them joints anyway and fucked off home and uh the following day then i went and i was going to the the place where the where the airport is, which is about an hour away. So I said I'd go there for, and I was my flight was early the following morning. So I said I'd go down there, just spend a day down there. So I actually just got kind of a half nice hotel. Um, well, it was just it was just normal, but there was a swimming pool. So I said, "Fuck it, I I don't want to do any more exploring. I'm just I'm ready to go. I have my bags packed. I uh, I'll just chill out by a pool somewhere." So I fucking. So got a place for swimming pool. There was no one around, fuck all around. And uh, I had that last tab of acid. So I fucking ate the acid and uh, yeah, just spent the day by the pool. I didn't I didn't even get food, did nothing because I, I wasn't hungry at all. And um, just went for a few swims. I actually, Kendrick Lamar's album had just come out. So I fucking listened to that like intensely for fucking three. I think I probably listened to it three times. Um, then did it, did a bit of writing, fucking whatever, mess around by the pool, uh, watched a few videos. It was, um, yeah, it was grand. It was sound, but then I needed to go to sleep because I had an early flight the next day. So I was, um, I was looking for that weed and, uh, I couldn't find it. So I fucking, which was a fair bollocks because I acid, like you, it's really handy to have weed after you've done acid to, just to get to sleep because um it's it, 
yeah, it's hard to sleep after acid, especially when you have to get up early in the next morning. You're just fucking wired to the moon. It's fine, like you're you're in a happy place or whatever, but you're just like, yeah, this is cool. But I would, I do need to get up tomorrow, so I need to go to sleep. But anyway, I didn't have it, so I tried to use like I had cigarettes, so I just smoked like fucking six cigarettes instead, and to try to go to sleep, it didn't really work. But eventually, I fell somewhat asleep for a couple hours. Went the next day anyway uh, to the airport, got in. Um, Got into the other side, true security and everything, and then fucking, uh, I, I think it was, it was a little bit cold in there or something, and I fucking, I put on my hoodie, and then I put my hands into the pocket of the hoodie, I was like, oh, there's another cigarette box, and the fucking, so that was the cigarette box I couldn't find the day before, or I, I fucking, I didn't remember that I had put the weed into the cigarette box, that's why I couldn't fucking find it, I was looking through everywhere, so I got true fucking security to the other side in Mexico, through the, the airport security with fucking weed in my pocket, which is obviously another fucking no-no. And sitting, just sitting in the waiting room, like fucking just had it in my hand and I was like looking at all the cameras and everything. Like no one was looking at me. No one gave a fuck. There was like, why would they suspect anything? Um, and I was like, just so fucking paranoid. I was like, oh, you stupid fucking cunt. So I was drinking a coffee. So I was just drinking that really fucking slowly, like shitting myself. And um, yes, yeah, so when the coffee was done, then I just walked over to the bin, just fucked the coffee into the bin, put the cigarette box and the weed into the bin and just walked over to the other side of the airport and took my fucking flight back to Toronto. But uh, so that bag of fucking 22 quid, for a half ounce weed, um, or whatever it was, was fucking, um, it was the luckiest bag of weed I've ever fucking, I've ever heard of. I, it was just so lucky. It was so many fucking, um, near misses there that would have fucking, like the airport one would have got me in real trouble, but the first one would have been, uh, I don't know, maybe a night in prison, maybe a fucking, a big scare, maybe, uh, and, uh, probably would have cost me a load of money. And at that time I had minus money very minus money so it wouldn't have been too handy and uh but the airport one that would have been that would have been big trouble but uh yeah anyway it didn't work it didn't happen because uh i suppose the universe wants me to be able to travel and become a fucking traveling comedian and uh i suppose that's that's what's going to happen i feel like i'm i am i'm invincible um i'm going to become a fucking famous comedian no matter what happens so i can no matter how badly i fuck up it just things work out for me and again so i don't need to worry about anything just write the jokes i moved back to ireland when i was supposed to stay in canada and keep doing comedy um lost my job house everything back in canada and then as soon as i decided to go back to canada the house came back up again new job came back up again and um shows came back up again so I, I can't miss on this thing. I can't fail. It's what I'm going to do. So, uh, and uh, no matter how wrong I try to go, no matter how badly I try to fuck up, it, it won't work. And I, I'm probably jinxing it right now, but I, I don't think I am because I've, I've said similar shit like this before. And uh, by God, I fucking get myself into stupid situations. But um, I seem to always come out the other side. All right. So I'll fucking see some of you cunts back in Toronto. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, maybe I'll do another one in between. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But um, looking forward to getting back to Toronto, getting back on stage. Uh, fucking, it's it's, it's going to be good. I'm going back with a new fucking, new mindset, new mind. So, yeah, um, I'm going to miss gonna miss Ireland. Delighted I got to be able to come back, spend a lot of time with my family, spend a lot of time with friends and uh, get to that wedding that I really wanted to go to. And... Um, but just yeah, just fucking nice little refresh there. But looking forward to getting back on the grind, getting back back to work in Toronto. All right, that's been the Darren Burke Show, episode thirteen. Thanks for listening, lads. See you soon.